So this might be unprecedented. I uh, don't know if this has ever happened in the history of the Humanist Report show before, but Chuck Todd said something, and I agreed with it. Feels wrong to admit that, but he said something that I think is objectively true, that for some reason, even though this is obvious, other pundits haven't pointed out yet, and this is necessary, because... The White House is going to listen to mainstream media. They're not going to listen to some dude with tattoos on YouTube explain why he needs to fight harder. But perhaps listening to mainstream media will at least let them know the way that what he's doing or not doing more specifically looks to the public. Let's watch. If you got on a plane or a train or really any form of public transportation today, you probably noticed a pretty big change. Yesterday afternoon, a Trump-appointed federal judge in Florida struck down the administration's federal mask mandate for travelers just days after the Center for Disease Control extended it through early May. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki called the ruling disappointing, but the White House has not yet appealed the ruling. They claim it's something for the Department of Justice to look into. Already the TSA, major airline carriers, Amtrak, Uber, Lyft, all others have dropped their mask requirements, essentially the second the, uh, the White House decided not to appeal. Folks, it's one thing for a Trump judge to strike down an order from the Biden White House, but it's an entirely different thing for the White House to let it happen without any legal pushback. And it's not the first time recently that something hasn't gone the White House's way. They don't fight back. They don't defend their rationale. They just give you the, um, the emoji shrug. We saw it when the Supreme Court struck down their vaccine mandate for large employers. We saw it when West Virginia's Joe Manchin essentially scrapped the president's entire domestic agenda in Congress. We may even be seeing it with the ongoing intraparty fight on Title 42. The Biden administration, with the full power and prestige of the presidency, with his party's power in Congress on the line this November, has repeatedly looked as if they're easy to roll. Chuck Todd is right. Chuck Todd is absolutely right. The Biden administration, with the full power and prestige of the presidency, with his party's power on the line this November, has repeatedly looked as if they're easy to roll. Exactly. Biden's unwillingness to fight for even his own agenda, which is not a revolutionary agenda. This is a pretty incrementalist and milquetoast agenda overall. But even his unwillingness to fight for that, I cannot tell you the damage that that will do politically long term to Democrats, because all the young people who came out to support Biden over Trump, if they can't even see the bare minimum get accomplished with a Democratic presidency, the message that they will take away is what's the point of voting? What's the point of participating in politics altogether if we can't even do the bare minimum, if basic governance isn't even possible because we have a president who's unwilling to fight? Now, I've seen centrists say that, you know, us progressives, us lefties, we're so stupid and naive because it's a simple numbers thing, right? Look at look at the makeup of the Senate and the House. It's just Biden doesn't have the votes. So you just have to vote harder next time. Except that's not a very inspiring message, first and foremost. You're not going to get out the vote with that. Second of all, it's just simply not true. I mean, even if that were the case and you definitely didn't have the numbers, that doesn't mean that you just give up and fight. Yeah, we have these issues that need to be addressed, various crises currently, but, you know, we only have a Senate that's split down the middle. Can't do anything. Sorry. No, you fight. As the president, you use your bully pulpit. You can use whatever approach you like. Biden can use the stick or the carrot approach. The problem is that he's done neither. He's done neither. And as Chuck Todd pointed out there, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, though, to be fair, has basically uh, completely ruined his presidency. They've obstructed him from doing even the bare minimum. He couldn't even pass Build Back Better, his signature reforms. And he's just giving up. Where's the push for Build Back Better? We were told that after Build Back Better failed, they'd bring up, you know, these individual pieces of legislation, you know, disaggregate build back better and pass climate alone and and pre-k universal pre-k alone that hasn't happened either because we all know it's going to be an obstacle and joe biden isn't up for the fight look there's a number of things that he can do to put pressure on joe manchin and i don't know that any of these things would be successful but the point is that he tries he could say 
If you don't play game, if you don't support this legislation, then we see that your daughter was engaged in price fixing when she worked at the company that produced EpiPen. Maybe we look into that. Maybe we fire your wife who I gave a job. Or you don't even have to use the stick approach. You can say, how about this, Manchin? If you support this climate legislation, we will include pork in there specifically for West Virginia. We'll create jobs, clean, green jobs for West Virginians. And you could take that back to your constituents and brag about it. He's not trying anything. You're not trying anything when it comes to voting rights legislation. I mean, Manchin and Sinema said no, and that was basically it. Biden said he'd fight, but he didn't fight. And I don't think Democratic Party loyalists and leaders of the party understand how damaging, how demoralizing that is. But you see, I actually, and this is incredibly cynical, so you could disregard this. I think that a lot of Democrats don't want to win. I think that having the majority in Congress, they don't have the Supreme Court, but having a majority in Congress is just too much pressure because any legislation that they pass is bound to offend some of their donors. So it's just easier to be a party where you don't have full control. And then you can just fundraise by sending emails to your constituents about how the big mean Republicans won't let you pass anything. And that's just easier because if you pass any sort of climate change mitigation legislation, then your fossil fuel donors might get pissed. If you try to do even a public option, your health industry donors will get pissed at you. So the easiest way to not rock the boat and maintain the status quo is to just have Republicans in control so you can use them as an excuse. But when Republicans are not in control, there's no excuse. The pressure's on you. You're in power. The buck stops with you. So to not even fight at a minimum is just... I can't explain how big of a bloodbath it's going to be for Democrats. And the worst part is that I think that a lot of them, so long as they get to keep their seat, are perfectly comfortable with that outcome. As Derek Thompson of The Atlantic points out, something very interesting and troubling happening with Biden's approval rating among young people, which has collapsed by more than any other age group since January of 2021. Between 18 and 34, he's down negative 19 points. Uh, no college, negative 20 points. Hispanic, negative 20 points. Black, negative 30 points. Now, there's a number of reasons for this. A number of reasons for this. After we saw a historic Black Lives Matter movement after George Floyd was murdered, we even saw protests across the globe. What has been done to prevent this from happening to more Black people? Nothing. Young people strapped with student debt heard Biden say he's going to look out for them. And what happens? Nothing. And I think that this Common Dreams headline really says it all. Progressives say climate inaction, student debt explained Biden's drop in support among young voters. One observer suggested there is a decent amount of young people not all that pleased to see the administration sucking up to fossil fuel executives as the earth rapidly loses its capacities to maintain life. And that's the thing right there. I don't think that anyone expected Joe Biden to be Bernie Sanders. But all that young people wanted is the bare minimum. Voting rights so we can maintain our democracy and something with regard to climate change. Just moving us in a positive direction so we can still have a habitable planet. Can't even get that. And, you know, let's, let's say that Biden tried everything. He fought Manchin and Cinema tooth and nail. And he did everything in his power to legislatively achieve his agenda. Even if that fails, what do you then do? You pick up your pen, you sign executive orders, you cancel student debt, you do everything in your power to accomplish change because we all know you have a limited amount of time to actually get things done, to move this country in a positive direction as Republicans try to rip it apart. And it just feels like Biden is asleep at the wheel. It seems like he isn't up to the challenge, he isn't taking this seriously, and he just wanted to be president so he can, I don't know, say he was president. It's just, I'm so soured on electoral politics that it feels like there's really nothing that we can do at this point, and we're just circling the drain. That's not to say that I'm discouraging anyone from voting, because of course, this is something that everyone should do. I think that voting is important. But in terms of giving people a reason to vote, not all people live in states where it's very easy to vote. In my state of Oregon, I have no reason to not vote. They mail my ballot to me. I can take my time filling it out. But in these states like Georgia, where you know votes are suppressed, where they have limited polling places, where you have to wait in line for hours, people need reasons to get out and vote. And Democrats have demonstrably failed 
to give them enough reasons. And I just, I don't think that they understand how their inaction, how their ambivalence is fucking us up for so long. I mean, we're about to likely see the end of Roe v. Wade. And what are Democrats going to do to fight that? We see, you know, uh, the Republican Party, the GOP, they are waging an anti-LGBTQ plus hate campaign, introducing hundreds of bills in legislatures across the country that are anti-trans, anti-gay. And Democrats can federally propose something, but they won't. They haven't even gotten the Equality Act passed. And I get it. Yeah, you don't have enough votes. But did I even see the fight? That's the thing. And after all of this failing again and again, we just got news that Biden is reportedly going to run again because this is what he told Obama. So the question is, what are you going to run on even? If you run in 2024, what's going to be the message? Look at all that I accomplished. We gave you, I don't know, a 1400 check after we promised 2000 at the start of my presidency. What are you going to run on? Even when Democrats do good things, they don't brag enough about the good things that they do. So even if he did do something, who knows how good of a campaign he can he can run. Uh, he can run. I'm just so sick of having to um choose between evil psychotic Republicans and not Republicans. That's all that Democrats are. They're not actively pushing back against the damage that Republicans are causing this country. But I mean, here we are. We're in this situation where because Democrats fail to act, they fail to stand up for the groups that get them elected. Well, you know, people get demoralized. Then they stay home. Republicans win. And then when Republicans do more damage and people are reminded of how evil Republicans are and how it's basically a gigantic organized death cult at this point, then they come back out to vote for Democrats only after being reminded of how terrible Republicans are. But then when they're reminded of how weak and uh, unable to govern Democrats are, then they just stay home. Republicans win again. It's this never ending cycle. But as the cycle continues, we as a country continue to circle the drain. It's just, it feels so demoralizing and hopeless. And we just need one leader in the Democratic Party who's able to stand up and change the direction of this party and the country, but actually win. But the problem is the Democratic Party establishment fights against people who are potential change makers. They fought against Bernie Sanders tooth and nail. They're fighting against Nina Turner right now. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say. You know, that they're comfortable. So regardless of the direction of the country, Democratic Party elites, they're wealthy enough to be insulated from the damage that the GOP causes to this country. But I mean, at some point in time, the dam is going to burst and the damage that they cause is going to affect everyone. You can only go so long without addressing climate change until we all die, literally, as a species. So I just feel like, you know, if you don't see this at this point, then I don't know what to tell you. But Chuck Todd right there for pointing this out, that Biden is weak, I think that's important because maybe Biden's White House will finally get the message that the way that he looks to everyone is not as some like unifier. Like he, he ran as being a unifier, but you're not just like going to unify the country by rolling over and dying and letting Republicans run roughshod over you, by letting your own party make a fool of you. You're going to bring together the country by passing policies by any way you can that actually change people's lives. Come on, man.